Welcome to the NGSS Toolbox. This module will cover Appendix E and the Disciplinary Core Ideas. There are two parts. In Part A, the Disciplinary Core Ideas and the Framework will be explored. In Part B, Learning Progressions and Instructional Practices to support the understanding of Disciplinary Core Ideas will be explored. In this module, you will explore the role of the disciplinary core ideas in the framework and understand how learning progressions inform the NGSS performance expectations for each grade band. Then you will apply this understanding to think about how instructional practices such as formative assessment and storylines support students in meeting the performance expectations. In Part A, you will need a copy of the NRC framework for K-12 science education, which is available in the link below the video. To start, think about the three most important science concepts or content knowledge that you hope students will deeply understand at the end of the science course that you teach. Write your list and include a brief rationale for each concept you chose. Why do you think this concept is so crucial? If you're in a group with someone that teaches the same course, compare your list with theirs. Pause the video as you complete these activities. Next, read the summary on pages 1 through 4 of the framework. Notice that the NGSS are built around three dimensions. As you're reading, consider the following questions and write your answers. Which of the three dimensions encompasses the main concept that you were just thinking about? And how do the other two dimensions support the development of deep content knowledge? Pause the video as you complete these activities. The National Research Council's framework describes a vision of what it means to be proficient in science. It rests on a view of science as both a body of knowledge and as an evidence-based model and theory building enterprise that continuously extends, refines, and revises knowledge. The three dimensions include practices, content, or core ideas, and cross-cutting concepts. The main focus of this module will be on the content dimension. Compare the disciplinary core ideas, box S1 on page 3 of the framework, for the subjects that you teach to your list of the top three concepts that you want students to understand after your course. What similarities or differences do you notice between your list and the framework's list? Pause the video as you complete this activity. The disciplinary core ideas summarize the science content knowledge required by the NGSS. Keep in mind that the content is only one of the three dimensions of NGSS. Read Achieving the Vision on pages 10 through 11 of the framework. As you read, consider the following questions and write your answers. Do you agree that science education in the United States currently lacks coherence? And how does the NGSS framework attempt to bring coherence to science education? Pause the video as you complete these activities. The NGSS framework lists the following ways that it attempts to bring coherence. First, by approaching learning as a developmental progression throughout a student's K-12 experience. Also, by focusing on a limited number of core ideas in order to build a greater depth of understanding of those ideas. And finally, the NGSS framework brings coherence by integrating the practices needed to engage in scientific inquiry and engineering design with the content knowledge. Read Dimension 3, Disciplinary Core Ideas, on pages 30 through 33 of the framework. As you are reading, consider the following questions and write your answers. Why is the list of core ideas for each discipline so short? And how does limiting the core ideas facilitate deeper learning? Pause the video as you complete these activities.
In order to be included as a core idea in the NGSS framework, they had to meet two or more of the following criteria. Have a broad importance across multiple sciences and engineering disciplines, or be a key organizing principle of a single discipline. Provide a key tool for understanding or investigating more complex ideas and solving problems. The idea should relate to the interest and life experience of students or be connected to societal or personal concerns that require scientific or technical knowledge. The idea should be teachable and learnable over multiple grades at increasing levels of depth and sophistication. That is, the idea can be made accessible to younger students, but is broad enough to sustain continued investigation over years. Science is both a body of knowledge about the physical world, physical meaning matter and energy, but also a process for developing that knowledge. Therefore, posing questions about the world and seeking to answer them is fundamental to doing science. The framework introduces the core ideas with a question designed to show some aspect of the world that this idea helps to explain. The question is followed by a description of understanding about the idea that should be developed by the end of high school. Choose one of the four disciplines in the framework to explore further. The disciplinary core ideas for each of the four disciplines are in chapters 5 through 8 of the framework. You're going to read the introduction to the disciplinary core ideas for the discipline that you choose and then quickly browse the rest of the chapter. Pause the video as you locate the section of the framework that you will explore. Keeping in mind that science is both a body of knowledge about the physical world and a process for developing that knowledge, read the introduction to the disciplinary core ideas for the discipline that you chose, and then browse through the structure of how the framework explains the core idea and its components. As you're reading, consider the following questions and write your answers. What do you notice about the structure of the information for each disciplinary core idea in the framework? That is, what's included and how is it explained? Also think about how you might use the framework to guide your instructional decisions. Pause the video as you complete these activities. A few ideas for using the framework to guide instruction include using the grade band endpoints to develop lessons that build on previous knowledge from earlier grades and toward new knowledge in later grades. Also, using the framework to structure lessons to emphasize the core ideas. And using the questions in the framework to guide learning activities. Finally, teachers may refer to the framework to identify their own content strengths and weaknesses. One of the guiding principles of the framework is the idea that understanding develops over time. Students need sustained opportunities to work with and develop the underlying ideas and to appreciate those ideas interconnections over a period of years rather than weeks or months. How do the grade band endpoints for each component of the disciplinary core ideas demonstrate this principle? Why would teachers need to be familiar with the grade band endpoints for all of the grade bands and not just the expectations for the grade that they teach? Pause the video as you consider these questions. Part B will introduce the idea of learning progressions and instructional practices to support student learning. The materials for this part include a report from the Center on Continuous Instructional Improvement, which is available in the links below the video, access to NGSS online, as well as an article inside the black box available from Discovery Education in the links below. In Part A of this module, you learned about disciplinary core ideas and saw that the framework includes grade band endpoints for the development of these ideas across the K-12 continuum. The grade band endpoints were informed by research on teaching and learning, particularly on learning progressions, as well as by the committee's judgment about grade appropriateness. 
To learn more about learning progressions, read pages 15 through 16 of the report from the Center on Continuous Instructional Improvement called Learning Progressions in Science, an Evidence-Based Approach to Reform. As you are reading, consider the following questions and write your answers. What is a learning progression? And how do learning progressions differ from typical scope and sequence documents or standards? Pause the video as you complete these activities. Learning progressions are hypothesized descriptions of the successively more sophisticated ways student thinking about an important domain of knowledge or practice develops as children learn about and investigate that domain over an appropriate span of time. Learning progressions emphasize the building of knowledge through different stages. The lowest levels represent novice thinking, the preconceptions they have based on everyday experiences and their discrete facts and vocabulary that they currently know. As learners progress, they begin to reason with a mix of scientific and unscientific ideas, which are often in conflict, and use more specific facts and vocabulary in their explanations. Finally, as they come to reason more like an expert, they recognize patterns and reason with a coherent network of knowledge and skills. It is important to recognize that learning progressions are hypotheses and they're continuously being refined through research. The approach of NGSS, which is built on learning progressions and current information about how students learn, is quite different than the traditional standards approach in many ways. The traditional standards approach focuses on the product of learning rather than on the process or paying attention to the learning progressions. Traditional standards have expectations developed by authorities, where the NGSS approach is based on current learning research wherever available. Traditional standards include many disconnected topics rather than fewer topics in greater depth. Traditional standards are assessed mostly with lower level assessment, where assessments of NGSS learning will focus on application of knowledge. Traditional standards lack careful vertical alignment as opposed to learning progressions by grade band. In traditional standards, knowledge and practice are typically treated separately, where NGSS seeks to integrate knowledge that includes both the disciplinary core ideas and cross-cutting concepts with the science practices that support that knowledge. And finally, traditional standards often didn't specify assessment objectives where NGSS has clear performance expectations that will define the assessments. The focus on learning progressions is represented in all three dimensions of the framework, although grade band endpoints are only specified for the disciplinary core ideas. Appendix E of the standards summarizes the learning progressions for the disciplinary core ideas that are included in the framework. Read page 1 of Appendix E from the NGSS website. Notice that although Appendix E focuses on the progression of the disciplinary core ideas, it does not suggest separating the disciplinary core ideas from the science practices or cross-cutting concepts in curriculum or in instruction. Pause the video as you complete this activity. Next, choose one of the three disciplines included in the chart in Appendix E to explore in greater detail. As you're exploring the progression, answer the following questions. What patterns do you notice in the progressions? Why is it important for teachers to have an understanding of the entire learning progression for a disciplinary core idea, rather than just an understanding of the expectations for the grade level they are teaching? And how could Appendix E help inform your instructional decisions? Pause the video as you complete these activities. Looking at the components of one disciplinary core idea for the life science progression, you'll notice that the content at lower grades is more concrete and at observable scales and open to students' direct experiences. As learning progresses, the ideas become more abstract and move to indirectly observable scales that are very large or very small 
Research on learning progressions indicates that student understanding generally must move through a lower level before progressing to the next. Therefore, teachers must continuously assess student understanding and use this data to adapt their teaching to meet the needs of their students. Formative assessment is defined by the use of evidence about student understanding to guide teaching. Consider the following questions. What formative assessment strategies do you currently use that could help you assess where students are along a progression? And what strategies would you need to learn in order to improve your practice in this area? Pause the video as you consider these questions. An important research finding is that improved formative assessment helps low achievers more than any other students and so reduces the range of achievement while raising achievement overall. Download the article Inside the Black Box, Raising Standards Through Classroom Assessment from Discovery Education Online. Read the section How Can We Approve Formative Assessment? at the end of page 6 through the first paragraph on page 11. As you are reading, consider the following question. How can the author's findings guide teachers' instructional decisions as they attempt to help their students move along the learning progressions summarized in Appendix E? Pause the video as you complete this activity. It's important to realize that formative assessment provides important information to the teacher and the student. Formative assessment is not an instrument or an event, but a collection of practices with a common feature. They all lead to some action that improves learning. Therefore, good instruction and formative assessment are indivisible from each other. And research has shown that the student is the most influential decision maker in the classroom. Formative assessment should help the student answer three questions. Where am I going? Where am I now? And how can I close that gap? The performance expectations of the Next Generation Science Standards integrate practices, core ideas, and cross-cutting concepts into statements of what students should be able to do at the end of a grade band. They're not instructional strategies or objectives for a lesson. Two keys for instruction to help students attain the level of the performance expectations are continuous formative assessment that provides data for both teacher and student, and coherent instruction or storylines, a resource available for teachers as they seek to develop storylines in their teaching is available on the NGSS website. If you click to view the standards arranged by disciplinary core ideas, You'll see that storylines are available at each grade band for each discipline. Choose one storyline summary to explore in greater detail. As you explore, think about how this document could aid you in developing a coherent storyline in your instruction. Pause the video as you complete this activity. This module considered the following questions. What are the disciplinary core ideas? and how do they fit in with the other two dimensions of NGSS? How do learning progressions inform the NGSS performance expectations for each grade band? And how do instructional practices such as formative assessment and the development of coherent instructional storylines support students in meeting the performance expectations? Summarize your learning in a few sentences. Are there any topics that you want to learn more about? Here are some ideas for next steps. 